Ah, boo, a hiss. Ah, what, 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 that ruined my day. Gee Louise. Has that ever happened to you, folks? I'd like to direct your attention to the board. Now, some of you may be familiar with this. This is from the musical <coughs> uh, It's a story of a poor little orphan girl who falls in love. Not she doesn't fall in love, she's adopted by this kind old man. Uh, but that's besides the point. Now, the, one of the most famous songs in Annie includes the line, the sun will come out tomorrow. Now, folks, I disagree. Imagine a world without the strife of sunburn. Imagine waking up in the morning, opening your window, and the sun doesn't blare into your eyes. Imagine no more arguing or squabbling about solar panel, because there won't be a solar to fuel the panels. Now, I've spent weeks scouring your human internet and looking into a bizarre, I'll admit, idea. What if we just got rid of the sun? Now, I know that sounds wild, it sounds over the top, but I really think, I really believe, and I think I've found sufficient evidence to convince you all that removing the sun would rapidly increase almost all of Earth's problems. Now, first and foremost, the sun is causing irreparable damage not only to your planet, but to your bodies. Um, uh, a major impact of the sun on the human body is a phenomenon known as photoaging. According to Yale Medicine, the sun's rays cause the veins inside of you to start to fester and putrefy and pop and fizzle and break and snap as your sinews you know, melt and blister. Uh, it leads to blotches all over your skin. Uh, um, so, uh, it, it, and not only sunburn, wait, here. this is uh, the effects of photoaging. Uh, the wrinkles that come naturally over time are partially caused by the sun, but overexposure to the sun's radiation can cause those wrinkles to happen faster. Uh, as the skin gets drier and layers of it start to decrease, the skin will fold over itself and sag and lead to photoaging. Uh, now, I will seed that sun tanning uh, is, you know, slightly beneficial. There has been proven that there are some benefits to sun tanning. But according to Hopkins Medicine, an increase in UV rays hitting the skin uh, has a large chance of affecting, uh, of causing skin cancer. Uh, basically, when those UV rays hit the uh, surface of your skin, uh, it gets beneath it and starts to affect the cells. You can see there's multiple different kinds of this, but it can rapidly increase. Uh, of course, sunscreen exists, and that is a method to prevent skin cancer, but even with sunscreen, even with the inconvenience of putting on sunscreen, uh, the risk still exists. Uh, now, okay. uh, the sun also harms, of course, Earth itself. NASA has confirmed, of course, that global warming is not only caused by changes in the sun and our atmosphere, and has been affected by human activity. I'll come back to that in a minute. But, in terms of Earth itself, the ozone layer is quickly being destroyed by the sun. See, so as multiple kinds of ultraviolet radiation hit the ozone layer, uh, we start to have holes appear in our atmosphere. That means even more radiation comes into our planet, affects our skin more, and you know makes it harder to grow food. Um, <coughs> uh, okay, so. Even though there are many negative effects caused by the sun, it's still ingrained in our culture. That's one of the biggest barriers, of course, of you know getting rid of the thing. Because it's there, it's, it's always been here. It's a thing in the sky that's pointed to, it's in art, it's in media, it's in literature, it's in literature existed. Um, one, according to, uh, ironically, because the sun's caused so much harm to our planet, to our bodies, to our ecosystem, it's really hard to argue against its existence because it is so ingrained in every aspect of our society. We glorify the spirit of suffering, and it literally blinds us. Uh, now, according to Inside, an article by Inside Mexico, the sun was historically uh, a representation of the coming of spring. So you'd see the sun, you'd mean clouds were going away, it means less storm, less rain, it means better crops. It's a, it represents springtime, sunshine, the end of winter, the coming of summer. Um, it meant prosperous crops, which is all true to an extent, but as time has gone on and the sun has increased in intensity and our atmosphere has been destroyed by the sun, it might have the opposite effect on our crops. Uh, when, I, when I say it's ingrained in our culture, a good example is uh, tortillas. So the sun 
I, I, I learned this doing research for this project, but according to the same Inside Mexico article, tortillas actually have a round shape based on the sun. They were cooked in heat and they were cut originally into that circular shape to represent the circle of the sun. I mean, it's one of the most simple shapes. I mean, look back to the wheel, look back to Mayan carvings. It all comes from that central icon, but it doesn't have to. There's nothing inherently special about the sun that means we should use it in all of our culture. It was just there. If it was a square, our tortillas might be square shaped. If it was a cold star, we lived in a system where that was possible, we would build our culture around that. So, and I'll get to the solutions in a moment, but when we create an artificial solution for the sun in the future, future civilizations might base their technology and base their ways of life around whatever thing replaces the sun. Let's say, for example, we replace the sun with, I don't know, a giant living, breathing organic mass orchestrated by science and combined with pneumatics to shoot into space and you know control our heat artificially, for example. Then that throbbing mass of horror might become the thing we base our society off of. It doesn't matter that it's the sun, it was just there. Uh, this is, oh, so I am not arguing, of course, for the total removal of the sun. We've already started to increase the heat of our planet artificially. Uh, according to, sorry, um, Weird. Oh, uh, no, sorry, uh, I'm not arguing for the total removal of the sun. Um, in all seriousness, obviously that would be disastrous if the sun just stopped being there. I'm being hyperbolic throughout most of this for the sake of argument and comedy. But in terms of actually blotting out the sun, there has been real research done. Harvard scientists backed by Bill Gates uh, created the str uh, stratospheric controlled perturbation experiment in which a large artificial mass would be hauled, uh, hauled up into the atmosphere and put in front of the sun to block the rays. Basically a giant black mass of absorbent energy going in front of the sun. Uh, now of course, there are some elements of human controlled heat that have already started to affect the environment. Uh, Dr. Uh, DJ Saylor explains in his paper on the subject that uh, this is what's called anthropomorphic heat is human, or anthropogenic heat, uh, is a human caused heat. So think fossil fuels, think burning fires, think anything artificial that generates a similar heat as the sun. A wider version of the system in a controlled sense could be used positively to affect our environment, to give us the same warmth and effect of the sun in a way that we can control. So today I have, today I have explained why getting rid of the sun, blotting it out of our sky, would not only decrease the harm being done to our bodies and to our planet, but would eventually overcome the societal issues that we're facing, or not societal issues, but would, would be ingrained in our society in the way that the sun already has been. Uh, and overall, that's the reason why removing the sun is good. So to brighten humanity's future, first we have to darken it.